Massachusetts. Um, we're just going to do a quick wrap up on the waffle definition. So there were a couple issues that came up. One was with the final step here using the laser formatting tool um, to lay them out and we were getting an error on this final curve and the reason if you hover over um, is that the data coming out of the laser format tool is a group and we're trying to convert it to put it into a curve container and that's not going to work so what we need to do is go grab a group component under geometry group container so uh, under geometry go to group and just hook that into cutting curves and you'll see that immediately that solves that problem uh, that's a good step forward so we'll drag down another one and do the other set of ribs okay so that's one big step and these are ready to be cut uh, one issue that you may run into is if this box, I'm going to scale this back so that it's not big enough, if this box is not big enough to fit any of these, excuse me, to fit any of the ribs, you'll get another error. So you'll see everything will go away and then if you hover over this it'll say empty geometry parameter. Um, an empty point parameter for the text tag location. So that, if you get that error, that means that your box is not big enough. So I'm going to come back in here and rescale this box to make it big enough, and you'll see that the components will fit. Now this box over here has an issue in that all of the ribs are sort of flying off of the box. So what I'm going to do is first I'm just going to move it and get a little bit more space, then I'm gonna just scale it regularly from this corner to this corner, and you'll see that, so you'll be able to scale it, and you know, you'll know you have to keep the size of your object in, in consideration, but you'll see that as you scale it, it actually orders the pieces in a logical system, and uh, that's based entirely on the size of a rectangle that surrounds the piece. So that's the way that this is working. And so if you wanted to go across a sheet, you might make the box a little bit bigger in one direction. If you want them all to stack up, you can make the box a little bit smaller. Uh, as I did over here, and you'll see they all sort of stack up on top of each other. Okay, so that's one issue that you may run across. So we just want to swap out those final curve components for groups and in the next version of this tool I'm going to be using uh, a... I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it in the component so that it won't be an issue and you can put either curve or group. Okay, oh and the final issue is that if you come over here and we look at these data tags you'll see that the, the trees are in different sets right now. So this is one tree with eight items, and this is eight values in three trees. So in other words, three rows. That's corresponding to these up here. So there are three rows, and uh, two items in, one of the, in the first row, three in the second, and three in the third. So that lines up with what we're looking at. So one, two, and then three, and three here. So unfortunately those text tags are going to get all messed up when we do that so what we need to do is flatten those text tags so we'll right click on then you can tell that it, this is the one with multiple branches on the data tree because it has the dotted line so we're going to right click on the L and flatten that data we need to do it on the other one as well and that'll fix our text sizing so now I'm just going to increase this substantially and you'll see now there's one for each and actually I'll just go back really quickly to show you what it'll look like if it's not flattened you'll see so right now they're sort of all stacking up on top of each other here that's because the way that the listing organization is working is it's putting uh, it's putting I think eight or seven it's putting seven different numbers in this spot so you want to make sure that's flattened and then you'll get the 
correct numbering scheme. And so you can see these are out of order, it would seem, but that's because they are put into order based on size rather than numbering. So it goes 3, 4, 2, 0, 1, 5, 7, 6. And so that's, that's in descending order of size. So that's why the ordering may be off. So now when you go to manufacture, I would recommend just taking these text tags and putting them either inside of the rib, which will be acceptable for most applications, or right next to the rib if you're if you're trying to keep the text off of the off of the piece itself. <clears throat> okay, so now I'd like to talk quickly about some possible strategies that you can employ here with the with the boxes that we're going to be filling uh, we're going to be filling in in the framework the waffles that you guys are creating. So right now I've created just a very simple uh, version of this. So if I show it, you'll see it's just a box with two inch sides and I just pushed up the middle so that you can just sort of see there's some something going on there. So, so it's just bending a surface outwards. Really basic and uh, nothing compared to what you guys are going to be doing. Okay, so um, this is with the other waffle generator. So what I'd like to to show you quickly, and I'm going to turn this on to wireframe viewport so that we can see the actual waffle itself. Okay, so right now this is sort of a straight on view of the waffle. So when the waffle's sitting in there, you'll be able to you'll be able to see straight through it to the other side. So and that may be part of what you're thinking about. So things to consider, sort of aesthetic decisions to make or conceptual decisions to make are well let's see, one would be playing with the spacing on your ribs. So let's say instead of six we're gonna do we're gonna do twenty. Go with a nice big number here. And it's gonna take a second. But let's let it go. Okay, so this is producing a very different result here. This is a completely different look from what we were working with before. But that's that's one possible approach. So you can increase the the density in, in one direction or in both directions. This of course could also go to twenty. And then you'll see that it's a very fine resolution waffle. It's just taking a second here. Take 15 seconds. It has to compute the intersection events for each of those. So it's 20 by 20, so 400 intersections. It's, oh, and it actually only went to 10 for us. But it's still computing 200 intersections. And, performing Boolean operations for each, so it's a little bit memory intensive. To increase this, you would of course just you know, go into the, into the component here and increase the maximum value. So that's one thing you could play with is, is resolution. So this will give you a much smoother resolution and much more clear definition of, this, of the shape, but much less porosity and you'll use a lot more material. So those are decisions that you have to make. I'm going to set this back so that we can play with it and not have to wait forever. So if I'm going to change that more time, let's make this okay. You guys will also notice that these numbers. It's actually the number of frames minus one. So or my, uh, plus one. So there's so there's four frames, so this is so it's five minus one. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, so we have this version, right? So this is one sort of potential approach. Now there are a couple other things that we could do. Let's just go ahead and I want to rotate this box and I'm gonna just rotate it maybe about 45 degrees, let's say to about there. Now when the waffle appears, 
it's no longer orthogonal with the box, but it's orthogonal with the yeah, it's it's parallel to the world coordinate system, and that's because the the definition is using the x and y directions, not relative directions on the box, and so not u and v directions. So that's one way to change it. You could play with the angles slightly in that direction, and one final. Uh, type of rotation, you could also work, uh, sorry my computer is a little funny here today, you could also work in the other direction as well, so you could raise this up, just go to about 45 degrees again, and now you see we've got a waffle that's, that's angled at a completely different direction and that gives it an entirely different result as well. Okay, so those are the those are very simple ways in Rhino to be affecting the shape of your waffle, the final appearance. And we also talked about changing the resolution and for you guys we're not going to be changing the rib thickness. So in this version I'm calling it the waffle thickness. We're not going to be changing that that set. You guys are going to be using 1 16th inch chipboard. So there's one other way, and there are of course a, a, a number of different ways that you guys can change the waffle to meet your requirements, but one other thing that you can do, and in your version there's only one of these installed, but it's easy to install the other one, uh, is put a graph mapper on those points. So if I go and show you these points, you can see now uh, that these are, let me just go ahead show all of these. These points are the points that create your your grid that the waffle is uh, that the, the, the grid that becomes lines and then they become planes and those become your section planes for, for finding your waffle ribs. So now if you distribute those points differently rather than how they are in a, in a less even manner, you can actually get a completely different result. So the way that you do that, and the first one is set up for you, and you're going to have to set up the second one, but essentially you divide the curve by some given val number of values, and then you input those parameters, so t from the division, into, and those are the curves that you've already set, the curves along the bottom surface of the bounding box of the object. You input those into a graph mapper, and you take those values and evaluate the curves at those points on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these guys again. And then I'm going to show these evaluated points. So right now, they're going to be the same. However, if I adjust, and I'm going to just quickly turn off one step here that's going to slow everything down so I'm just I'm just stopping the last part of the definition here and then we're going to go through and we'll we'll go pick it up later so now you'll see if I if I adjust these these points on the that are on the bottom we're going to adjust evenly so so you're going to evaluate each curve with the same set of parameters the opposite curves so that it draws straight lines across. If you draw lines that are not straight across you're going to run into problems. So you can only have two graph mappers, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. There is a way to do it the other way but it requires a whole lot more steps and likely you don't want to spend your spring breaks doing it. So I would avoid it unless you are feeling really ambitious. So this way you're able to make some adjustments and of course right now I'm just using a conic curve evaluator but you can use any type of graph that you would like to get any sort of distribution that you would like. So we're evaluating those curves, we get these points and then we're going to draw lines across and I'll, I'll just adjust both of these so they have different results and then these lines across are going to become differently spaced and those are going to become our our planes and eventually our ribs. So now if I go ahead and hide all this stuff 
and then I come over here and I'm going to turn on these solid waffles and this might take a second but let's see it's going to draw it's going to generate our entire waffle frame based on those points so it's adjusting them and, oops, sorry. button there it goes and voila now we've got We've got our waffle, and the spacing on the waffle is no longer even. It's a little hard to tell in this example, but if I were to come over here and, and really change those graph mapper values, let's just see what happens. So I would be careful about using the graph mapper, especially if you have a whole lot of uh, ribs, if your resolution is really high. This is just going to chew up your computer because it's going to do all of the, not all of them, but it's going to do a lot of steps in between your original value and your final value. But I think this is a low enough resolution that I'll have some play here. So let's see what happens. So now you can see the waffles are stacking over to that left side there. That's too much, obviously. Let's bring it back. So there we go. Okay, so now you can start to see here that there's some density that's showing over on this left side and a little bit lower density on the right side. So that's one more way that you can play with it. And all the rest of the components, all of the pieces, the notches and everything should work quite well. You might end up with, see this sort of issue where it's intersecting the box but it's also cut off of the end and if that happens you're just gonna have to get rid of that piece. Okay, so those are your primary options for things you can play with. And if you guys have any other ideas, please feel free to explore them and we'll see what people come up with. And uh, good luck. This has been Rob with Analysis and Representation 2 at the University of Massachusetts Amherst.